Good morning, pilgrims. It is day one on the Camino Inglés. With any luck, a good tide and the winds of fate, I will make it to Santiago in five to six days. I'm in the poor city of Ferrol, right next to the starting point in the marker. And let's get this day started. Now I got here yesterday on a train from Santiago. It was a one hour and a half ride, not too bad. Walk from the train station to the hotel, 10 minute walk. And the first thing I had to do was go to the cathedral and get myself my first stamp, which I did. The cathedral opened at 6 p.m. and I was the first one in. I then went to uh, the stone marker to just check it out, see where the starting point was. And while I was there, I met another pilgrim who wanted to take my picture, and who am I to say no? I returned the favor and then just strolled the streets of this town. I wanted to get a few aerial shots, but there's a naval base right next to it, and there are two destroyers back there. And they look angry, they look American. <laughs> and I don't want a Tomahawk missile taking out my $600 a drone that wouldn't be fair not to the taxpayers so i just decided to stroll the streets and uh, enjoy the sight I had dinner at night and then you know called it a day woke up this morning at 7 a.m sharp had to walk back to the starting point and uh yeah just had breakfast and i'm looking out for a panaderia so i can have a fresh uh croissant because they didn't have any food there today is gonna be a 30 kilometer day. That's right. We're gonna kick it off with a bang. <laughs> I've been walking for over 40 days. I mean, I did the Camino uh, Portuguese, then the Norte, and now this. If we're gonna compare it to a pilgrim menu, the Portuguese was a starter, the first plate. The Camino del Norte was the main course. It was the second plate. And now the Inglés is gonna be the dessert. And for coffee, I'm gonna walk from Muxia to Fisterra because every Camino needs to end in Fisterra. I mean, it is the end of the world. And that's the point where you go and sit by the lighthouse and reflect on all the walking that you've done so far. walking down the near empty streets of town in search for the second half of my breakfast all by myself because every pilgrimage I start on my own but it is the people that I meet along the way that make them extra special. I love first days on El Camino, any Camino. There's just so much anticipation, so much that uh, you have built up in your mind, getting ready, preparing, going over your gear, taking your flight or train, any mode of transportation to get to the starting point, and then the day finally arrives, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? And uh, yeah, today is gonna be a long day walking by the coast, by the bay, trailing it. At uh, one point we had to go over some mountains, probably get a very nice uh, bird's eye view from up there before finally making it to the town where I'm going to be staying today. There's an option to break the day in half, but I took a rest day yesterday and I'm feeling 100%, so I may go the full 30 kilometers. We'll see. Let's just take it one step at a time. <music> Hey! 
I just had my second half of my breakfast at a bar, a chocolate napolitano and an orange juice. Starting to warm up, so I took off my uh, fleece jacket. And I also had to take a little detour from the path because it was gonna take me right into the pour section of it. And I decided just to cut across in search of breakfast because there was nothing on that side of town. <laughs> As far as weather goes, it's an overcast day with a 1% chance of rain. I think it's gonna remain like that for the remaining of the day. But uh, I know better than to trust the weather channel. I have my poncho ready, because I got it rain done with only 4% chance of rain on my previous Camino. Look at this freaking missiles. I'm telling you, this is like a military base over here. Look at that depth charge. And behind it, there's like a torpedo. <laughs> Just saw my first uh, stone marker and it says 109 kilometers to Santiago. Just a little bit over the 100 kilometer mark to get the Compostela. I got too many already, man. I just spotted the first uh, pilgrim on the road, but pilgrims, for the most part, are very shy creatures, unless you're on the Frances. And it's gonna take a couple of uh, encounters before we start warming up to each other, and then eventually we'll become like family. <laughs> but as for now, it's just a, uh, hey, buen camino. We'll take it from there. There's a bridge up ahead that I can take a shortcut across, but that would mean that I would uh, detour from the historic route. There are pros and cons. There are people that tell you to do it, others not to. I guess I'll find out because I'm not taking any shortcuts on a five or six uh, day pilgrimage. No way. Actually, let's try to extend it a little bit. I wish I could. I took the path when I got to the, the bridge, as, I, as you should as well. And uh, it didn't take long for me to realize that maybe I made a mistake because it just took me right to the industrial complex, the Polígono Industrial, but it wasn't too bad. I mean, I was also walking next to the water's edge on a path for uh, walkers and uh, runners. And now I'm in this little uh, wooden area following the train tracks and uh, not too bad I mean not one of the most beautiful looking uh, places that I've been on the on my Caminos but it is what it is come on let's be positive here guys it's day one yes and sighting anticipation 30 kilometers let's do it And by the way, I also came across two other pilgrims. So right now we're talking about four pilgrims so far, including me would be five. I thought it was gonna be more of a desolate uh, Camino, but it is April 30, right after Semana Santa, all the Caminos get saturated. Looking forward to meeting them at the Alberghi. There are three options today. 
you can go all the way around uh, the bay as I will do 30 kilometers you can cut across the bridge cutting the day almost in half or you can stay in Neda where there's an albergue there's no albergue in uh, Farol go figure they closed it but uh, there's one in Neda so if you want to do just that stage which would be like a 15 kilometer day you can actually wake up late have breakfast start walking around 10 or even noon and get to the albergue and uh, just have a nice first day shouldn't be doing 30 kilometers on your first day especially if it's your first Camino come on let's stay let's keep our feet nice and healthy and uh, no blisters please So I'm done walking on this side of the bank of the bay. I'm about to cross over to the other side, to the dark side of the force, you may say. And I got to the split on the road. If I go to your left, it's the regular Camino, but there's a supplemental Camino that is just a short loop to take you to this point of interest. Usually when you get to uh, the 100 kilometer marker, you've been walking for an extended period of time, but not on this one. On this Camino, it happens on the first day, but it is still reason to celebrate. And I will do so, not with a beer, a caña or, uh, or some wine. I will do so with some uh, fresh water from that water tap back there. So just on the opposite side of the modern day bridge in Neda, check this out, is the albergue. Now there's nada to do here and it's 11.30 in the morning so I'm just gonna keep going and uh, do the 30 kilometer day as I had originally planned. But you can take a break here if you want before moving on. Thank you. 
So the question is, if I already crossed the 100 kilometer mark, do I need to get two stamps a day? And if so, where do I get them? Because usually the churches are closed. I don't want to get them at the bars. So the question is, where? It is almost 12 o'clock and I'm uh, getting a little bit hungry. So I'm gonna start looking out for a place to have uh, lunch. Camino is getting crowded. I've seen a few more pilgrims along the way, which is a great thing. Just had a lunch at the last bar on my way out of Neda. It was just a Spanish omelet, like potato uh, omelet with bread and uh, caña. That's the typical food that you're gonna be able to find at bars here. I was looking for something else, but they just didn't have it. The place was pretty cool. It had like a, this whole, uh, you know, comic book theme to it. Uh, leaving town under this overpass and there's a huge yellow arrow, so I doubt that you're gonna get lost. <laughs> All right, Neda, it was good to see you. Also, from now on, we're gonna start climbing. It has been uh, pretty flat, I would say, for the majority of the morning, but now there's a little hill that we have to go over to the next town, and then there's a, like a 100 meter mountain up ahead. Taking my time, probably get there between 3 and 4 p.m. I've been reading the reviews for the albergue online and it is not encouraging. Some people even say that I should just go to a pension. But I'm gonna stop by and check it out because uh, from my experience in the past, some people are just too picky. Especially when you're considering an albergue that you're only paying six euros to stay for the night. If they have hot water showers, if they have a bed, if they have blankets, and if they have, let's say, a washer and a dryer, I'm staying. I need to wash my clothes. Uh, the last time that I washed my two sets of clothes that I have was in uh, O Pedroso, the day before reaching Santiago. So it's been a couple of days. I definitely need to wash my clothes today. And as you can see, there's no sun, so I can't do it by hand. I need a washer and a dryer. It doesn't matter what it costs. There's one at the Alberga, I believe, so that's where I'm heading. You can see uh, this morning uh, stage from up here. It was a little bit of a climb, not too bad. I think they take you up here just to uh, get you away from the busy road down below. But there are also cars up here. So it's up to you, you can take either one. Spectacular views, I mean, I just wish that it was like clear blue skies. It would probably look even better. But no worries, you can still see both bridges. It's been a good day, man.
the climb through the forest wasn't too bad. It was actually a nice break from uh, the morning, just walking by the city and towns. And uh, even though I had the ocean on the side, the woods is always a welcoming sight. And it happened just as uh, the sun started to come out. So perfect timing. And now doing a couple of zigzags here and there, cutting through the roads. And it's gonna be the final descent into town. Good day, man. Hopefully I won't end up like a bug in the windshield. Wow, coming down that mountain was really something else. I wasn't expecting it. Cutting through the woods, the little villages, the towns, and then getting my first view of the city with the beach. And now, check this out. Check out the woods that I'm walking in. It's just magical. I stopped at a, at a little bar, like a beachside bar, and enjoy a Coca-Cola while watching the kids playing soccer and swimming in the freezing water which i will not get into and it was just perfect you know perfect way to uh end the day to get to town after a very long walk mostly on pavement and cutting through uh industrial sections and it was overcast and now it is sunny i'm on the beach i mean this is just bliss what can i say now let's check out that <laughs> A burger from a horror film. <laughs> I'm sure it's not gonna be that bad. Come on. So check this out, I got to town and the tourist office is right behind me. And as far as a tourist office go, that's a pretty cool one, right? Uh, it opens in about 10 minutes and this is where you need to come to get registered, get your key, probably pay your donativo. And uh, the albergue, I gotta say, it is a storage room in an active fish market. So it might get a little bit smelly in there. There might be some truth to the rumors, to the comments that I read online. But we'll see.
that burger is like a five-star hotel. I don't know what people are talking about. I settled in, I took a hot shower, I washed my clothes, and I uh, took the risk of uh, washing everything and hanging it out to dry with only a few hours left of uh, sunshine. And the gamble paid off. Everything is dried and nice. And then after that, I went out to the church to see if I could get a stamp. The mass was about to start, so I couldn't get myself a stamp, but no worries, I uh, headed out to get something to eat. It was uh, eight o'clock, so I came here to Casa Abuela and I had myself a burger with wine and uh, fries and coffee to close the night. It was just amazing. And uh, now I'm just uh, gonna go ahead and head back. It is a full at burger. I mean, almost every bed is taken, which uh, has taken me by surprise. I thought this Camino was gonna be more of a empty, uh, solitude kind. But I came across a lot of pilgrims today, most of which are, are not there, so they're either staying at a private albergue, a pension, or something similar. Let me just say that the, the detour that I took, not the detour, the actual Camino going all the way around the bay was beautiful. Was it worth the 12 kilometers? I don't know, what do you think? To me, the best part was just going over that mountain, going into the woods and the views from up there, and then coming down into the beach and into the town. That was just the best part of the day. So if that's what you're into, you can go ahead and skip the whole loop and uh, take the bridge. Guys, if you like the video, I hope you enjoy the series, and uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe, hit that like button, and share the, this video with your friends. And I'll see you guys tomorrow very early probably at 7 a.m. Tomorrow's gonna be a 20 kilometer day, so no, no worries. It's gonna be an easy day. And every time I say that, I end up doing a double, so it's gonna be a tough, tough day. See you then.